I'm going to introduce you to a program that is very useful for image manipulation. This is called GIMP for the GNU Image Manipulation Program. This is available at GIMP.org and this is available for free to users uh, with a PC platform, the Mac platform. Uh, basically does all kinds of stuff that Photoshop does without having to pay all the money. So you'd be able to download it from here. I'm going to zip over to my other window where I have this program uh, loaded. Make sure you can see everything in here. So uh, very much similar to the look of Photoshop and uh, you'd be able to open and manipulate image files. You might need some familiarity with basic file formats like JPEG and uh, TIFF and so on. But uh, really versatile does just about everything that Photoshop does. Alright, so I'm going to zip over to our course and I'm going to open that Whitewater uh, GeoTIFF that we had before. So a very large file and it's going to give me some options to import it. Uh, PDF, what it does is it rasterizes. So it takes that PDF that has the lines that always stay crisp and during this import function it's actually going to uh, turn those into colored blocks uh, which is something that doesn't change. It's, it's like the resolution on a photograph. Uh, we can't improve that after doing this import but that's okay for the purposes we're using. So you can adjust the resolution. The resolution will adjust the file size. Uh, increases exponentially so every doubling of the resolution is, uh, I think, four times larger file size because we're working in two dimensions here. Uh, so I'm going to risk it and go for 200 pixels per inch or DPI and import that. Got a fairly new computer here, so that'll go through pretty fast. Uh, it didn't give me the layers that I was able to see in uh, when we opened this in Acrobat Reader, but it did give me the layer I wanted, so pretty comfortable with that. Uh, I've done lots of, um, I'm comfortable with keyboard shortcuts, so I'll describe those to you. I don't know if I need, if I know where the uh, menu options are for these. So one keyboard shortcut is the number one, goes to full resolution. Uh, you can also use the plus and minus buttons to zoom in and out. So uh, this is the best our resolution is going to get. If I zoom in more, you'll notice we got some pixelation, and you can actually see uh, really high magnification. These are just squares of color. So I can go one back to where we were. Uh, now minus to go farther out, and then I can zoom around here. So I'm going to be interested in the Whitewater Nature Preserve, which is not particularly marked on here. Uh, you might be aware that Whitewater City actually straddles two counties. So when you go to the uh, Nature Preserve north of campus, you take Prairie Street up here until it dead ends at Schwager Drive. There's the wetland here, uh, quite often these days with standing water, but uh, not classified as such. It's kind of a, a man-made system, so uh, whether there's water in there or not might depend on how we're letting the water flow through here. Uh, can see some high elevation areas, so there's a ridge on the western side. This is forested. If we go farther west, we get to Perkins Stadium. Uh, there's some forest in here, as you can see with the green. And then there's another ridge that I'm going to start my transects on as I show you that in a video. Uh, so a ridge here on a prairie location, and then you could look downhill towards Fremont Street here to the east, or from the ridge downhill toward the wetland there. Uh, you can see from the contour lines our wetland is at the low elevation portion of this. So the region, uh, it's actually kind of small on this map but I'll show you the region that we can, uh, that I ran a little transcript, transect on. Uh, I'm going to switch to the paintbrush tool. There's also a keyboard shortcut indicated here. So after the description, it says P. That means that you could use the letter P on your keyboard to keyboard shortcut. So I did just that, uh, changed us to the paintbrush tool. And the circle that I'm dragging around now, this is the size of my paintbrush. Uh, over here it shows me the kind of paintbrush. So it has this paintbrush with fuzzy edges. If you want a paintbrush with hard edges, you can do that. If you want a wacky paintbrush, you can do a paintbrush in the shape of a star. Uh, most of this I don't use, but hey, you never know. Uh, so I kind of like crisp lines and I like smaller. So I'm going to go in the size bar. Um, if I grab the top half of this size region, I can click in there and it'll change the number directly. Uh, you can also use these arrows to do up and down in the size of your paintbrush, and I just kind of trial and error on that one. 
So we pulled in a really big image. Uh, most of it is not something we need. Big in this, not going any bigger there. Huh? All right. So the transcript I ran was, I keep saying that, I'm sorry, transect I ran. Uh, it was roughly from the top of the hill here. And I'm going to do another trick. I'm going to hold the shift key and it gives me a direct line from A to B. So I ran that kind of downhill toward the wetland uh, up until the point where it's basically uncomfortable walking in there. And I got along the way uh, about 20 spots. And so my uh, locations of the survey spots would be starting at the top and then kind of evenly spaced as we go down. Uh, I imagine I'm going to draw 20 in here. I mean, it might need a new resource that gives me um, better resolution if I was to actually plot where these were located. So we can see this here, uh, locations of the, the plots along the transect, roughly. Uh, I suppose we could go over to Google Maps and uh, see another option there. So this is the same area um, without the topographic lines, although we can turn on terrain here and it'll give us a little indication. Um, they're not big hills, so they come in as a really mild shading there uh, without even any topographic lines on there. So not super helpful. The satellite image might be a little more helpful. Uh, satellite images, you're, you're kind of at the mercy of when they took these satellite photos. So this happened during a uh, wintry season. You can just see that we're not very green. Uh, I guess one advantage is in the winter you can see the line, the outline of the water body pretty crisply there. Um, also, this has been a project that the geography department has worked on, uh, so there's actually really good data on Google Maps for our location here. And I don't remember how to draw a line, so I'm going to skip that for now. Uh, but basically, I came in, uh, this is sort of the kiosk area there, no, this is the kiosk area here. Uh, I came in there and then from this location uphill to about there. So the transect I ran was from here down to the water. Um, some features you can see even from here, There's this is a managed area. Um, so you can see a little bit of evidence of uh, mowed trails. It's kind of an interesting pattern. If you look at this little ghost outline along the wetland, uh, that might become kind of curious. So this looks to me, uh, I've got some experience at the site, looks like a hydrological feature where the standing water is here at the moment that this photo was taken, but uh, it looks like this would be maybe the boundary of what qualifies as a wetland. So in the transect video, or let's see, the transect data that we've got, uh, at some point it crosses over and becomes entirely wetland plants. It switches over really drastically to a uh, reed canary grass and then cattail community here after being a fairly diverse community up to that point. So we can kind of see some of these features from a distance. Uh, this kind of technology with different images and uh, more images and, and more analysis, you can actually use something like this to really classify your habitats. So people use something as fine as the different greenness of leaves and use that as an indicator to see, uh, for example, what kind of tree species you have. So lots of power uh, available even from satellite photo.